Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I'm back with another video for W Plus 9. Today I'm going to be using two stamp sets from the newest release, which are uh, Big Deal and what's the other one called? Big Tap Background. So I have a piece of paper here that I'm putting in my Mini Misty. I've already cut this with the Sunshine Layers die and I thought I, I use this, this particular um, panel a ton. I just think it's super cute. And so I thought it would be fun with these little animals um, from the circus. So I'm just getting my placement down to um, stamp kind of like a one layer panel. I am going to pop up my sentiment, but all my images are going to be one layer. So as I'm stamping, I'm masking as I go. You want to stamp the, the things that are in the forefront first and work backwards. So that ball is going to be in front of everything else. So I stamped it first. Directly behind that will be the stand. And then I'm going to stack the um, hippo and the bear on top of that. And then I really loved the sentiment in there that said have a ball. So I wanted the bear to be juggling. And to stamp my uh, bear and my elephant, I didn't even need to mask them. They just kind of are made to fit to stack, which is super cool. I, of course, cut masks for everything anyway, because I have nothing better to do with my time. That's not true. I just like one layer cards. So in order to have him juggling, there is a ball included in there, but I wanted them to be evenly spaced. So I stamped the one in the center first and then did the two above his hands. And then that way I could evenly space the ones that were in between. There is a stitched line that is die cut into this panel. And I didn't want my background to go over that stitch line. I wanted the scallops to remain white. So I just taped it down with some washi tape, which was also going to serve as a mask for me and this background. So the, something super cool, don't mind my head, about this particular background is you can see that the rays on the left hand side, they, they don't match up. The reason they don't match up is so after you stamp the first one, which I, you can see there, I didn't give good enough pressure. That was my fault. I had to stand up and Sherry Carroll CPR it, and I didn't. I was being lazy, and so that was my own fault um, that I didn't get great coverage. Plus, I have a couple of layers of masks. But anyway, the reason that it the um, background stamp is set up that way is so you can flip it over. Like, you can see me here. I'm stamping the same thing. I didn't have to take it off. Um and it will fill in your whole card front. So everything matches up, which is awesome. Now you can see as I was given that thing, uh, CPR, just going to town there, um, I actually got some ink on my white area. Thank God, W plus nine inks are alcohol based. So I can just use my Copic colorless blender to actually remove the color. So I just hit that up a couple of times and you can see here in the close up, you can barely see it. But I'm going to add shading to the background anyway because I add shading to everything because I have a real problem in life. Um, I can't just leave anything alone. Um, so to fill in those areas that I missed because I was poorly stamping, I picked out a, um, a red color that matched fairly close. The Gala Red, which is what I stamped the background in, is going to serve as my lightest color. And then I picked out a R24, a 29, and a 59 to add some shading to that background. Um, and I'm just using small flicks of color, working from the center out. Um, like I said, that, that ink is going to be my lightest color, so I'm not going all the way to the edges, just kind of filling in more of the center. And with each consecutive color, there will be less and less of it. And it actually blended really nicely. Like I said, because these inks are... Um, alcohol based. They work really well with Copic markers and they all just kind of blend and make friends and it's just super easy to get good shading. So after I did the first layer, I'm going to go in with the R29, which the name of it is actually called Lipstick Red. When I think red, this is the red I think. That's that's the like more traditional red. And then very few little flicks of this R59 just to give it some dimension. And then you can just tell the difference. Like it really starts to look like that background is set in the back. For the white portions, I still wanted them to remain white. I showed you a C5. I'm not using that on the background. I'm using that on the hippo. Um, but I just wanted you to see all the ones I was using. So I just did a little bit of C3 and then kind of blended that out with the C1. So if there had been anything showing from that red that I had gotten on the white strip, this pretty much would have distracted from it anyway, but the colorless blender actually worked pretty well. So now I'm going to move on to that hippo. And I'm basically going to color all of him minus his, are they tusks? Where are, are they teeth? I think they're teeth. 
his teeth mm -hmm, and um, his toes. I'm gonna leave those white. Everything else I colored in um, just with the light gray marker. And then for his shading, I pretty much did central shading on this whole thing. Um, I wasn't really paying too much attention to a light source per se. Um, so I'm going to add shading underneath uh, where his snout would stick out and then also on the back of his face where his snout would be sticking out um, further, making that darker is going to push it back underneath his belly. And then there's two lines in the background that kind of give him a more round appearance, like for where the rest of his body would be. And I made that dark as well. Then I'm going to go ahead and um, blend that out with the C3 and then just kind of blend everything all together with the C1. I did leave some areas um, with just one coat of C1, but I, I did want him to be gray. The bear is standing on top of the elephant's head and I realized I hadn't added any shading there. And there would be some shading there because he's standing on his head, folks. So after I added just that little bit of shading, I went in with an R20 and just gave him just a little bit of blush of his cheeks and then in his ears, I did pink. I went with my favorite combination for browns um, for my bear here, and that's the E55 or E50 family. Um, so again, trying to do just some central shading, not really looking at kind of like a light source. Um, his leg is out front there, so his belly would be darker. The leg that's behind would be darker. You can see I filled that whole thing in. Um, underneath his, what is that? I don't even know. His dress, his choker. I, I don't know what it's called. Underneath his pretty um, accessories. <laughs> I'm just making this up as I go, honest to God. Um, so underneath his kind of, his little circus accessories there, there would be shading. And then again, I did that behind his snout, made that darker. And I originally thought I was going to do some kind of reflective light on his little tushy there. And so I did the shading more toward the center. I didn't end up liking the way that that looked. So eventually I'm going to go back in and fix that. I'm going to add substantially more of the dark brown on that back leg because anything that's darker automatically falls to the back. And we want to show that that leg is behind the rest of his body uh, or her body. And then I'm really going to start bringing in that E55, which is going to be my main color. The 53 will really just be the highlight. The back leg will be completely filled in with that 55. And then once I get this 53 down, uh, which I did make his mouth snout area, um, just the E53 lighter so it would kind of stand out. Um, I, you're going to see that I'm going to go back in with it because it just, his butt looked weird. His, his little tushy looked funny. So I'm just going to go back in with the 55 and blend that out. For his nose, I'm going to use all the same grays. I'm going to use the 50 or the um, C5 and the C3 and then bring in a C9. And I'm just going to do a little line of that, a little line of the C5, and then the C3 will be the highlight. I pretty much stuck to primary colors here. Um, there's just something about the circus that I think is very typically um, the red, blue, and yellow combination. And I want more of a sky blue, but you could go more of a traditional blue. And you could really color these in anything that you want. I just, when I think circus, I think of these primary colors. So to add the um, scarf, choker, thing, whatever, to add the shading to it, there's little lines that are set in there. And so I'm adding the darkest shading to where they would tuck under each other, where those little lines would be, and then also under his chin. Then I'm blending that out with the medium tone, careful to leave a highlight kind of in the center. And I'm coloring all the, the balls that he's juggling the same way. So I'm adding just a little bit of dark on the bottom, a mid-tone, and then I'm taking that mid-tone, just a little line of it over the, to the, like the right-hand side. And then that's going to, the lightest color will be the highlight that I filled it in with the first place. I'm going to make the ball blue as well. I typically try to work in colors that are arranged in threes. Um, that really didn't work out that way for me with this card, but I'm okay with it because it wasn't an overbearing amount of color. So because I'm doing the central highlighting, there's going to be shading on either side of the ball to give it a more round appearance. When I add my darkest color, I didn't add it all the way to the edge. I left kind of like a little lip of the lighter color. So again, it would just really accentuate that round look. And each time I'm just using a slight flicking motion, um, moving the color toward the center, which will be the lightest part. 
And it, I had a hard time staying out of the white dots. Um, so in order to clean those up, you can go back in with like a colorless blender and just, um, just hit them up and push the color back out where you want it. If you wanted to color those, a uh, contrasting color for the stand that he's on, um, it's obviously going to be darker behind where the ball is. And then kind of, um, because it's a round stand, it, the highlight will be in the center. So I used the darkest colors at the top and brought them down. And then once I had the blue done here, this is me with the colorless blender taking out any of those areas because I knew that I wanted to leave some of them white. And I was also going to do red. The red's going to cover up any of that blue because it's just a stronger color. Um, so I'm not really concerned about it. But the ones that I wanted to be white, uh, I was more concerned about. Coloring um, a couple of those, I actually ended up doing two of those balls yellow. And then also this star. I didn't do a ton of shading on the star because it is in the center where the central highlight would be, but I did add just a little bit to the edges so it didn't look just plain. And then I'm going to do the stand the same way um, that I did the blue portion, except this time I'm going to be putting the darkest part at the bottom since the highlight will be in the middle, but also adding that shadow behind the ball because it is in front and would cast a shadow behind itself. Um, for, for my yellow combination, I used my darkest color. It was It's still a Y, but it's more on the orange side. Um, and I just liked it because it was bright and fun, and I felt like it went with the, the blue and red combination that I had picked. I'm going in now with the uh, same reds. I colored in the stars on the stand, and then I'm going to do the just random of the circles on the ball. And then to add the shading uh, to the ones on the edges, I'm going to go in with the... Um, darkest color where it would be darkest and then the ones that are more centralized I just did a little bit of shading with my mid-tone. So once I was happy with that I'm going to add some ground because right now it just kind of looks like they're floating on this big top background and so I'm going in with that C9 and then blending it out with the C5. You can still see the um the stamping in the background, that doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, you could mask that off to begin with or just use darker grays and it'll cover it up. I just, I didn't want to have to go fishing around for more grays and it didn't really bother me. The gray muted it enough that it was fine and I just added more C5 until I was happy with the way that it blended out. Then from here, I'm going to add just a little bit of shading with the C3 to the areas that would be darkest. Um, on that ball so it would have a round like I said a round appearance and then I added some highlights onto the balls and the bear's nose um, with this white gel pen and then I just filled in the areas I wanted to be super white with on the hippo with that white gel pen. I outline all of my images because I have a real love affair with a black outline and if there's a black outline on my card then I want it to be bold and I want my colors to pop and I want everything to be bright and happy and that's just how I like it, folks. So I'm going to go ahead and outline everything on here, all of the images, so that there's a good, um, good strong outline. And then for the sentiment, I actually decided that I was going to do some heat embossing. So I used my embossing buddy to um, just make sure there was no static on the paper. And I'm, what am I using? I'm using the... I think it's W plus 9's char charcoal. I think that's what it is. And I'm stamping the It's Your Birthday twice because I knew I was going to have to break up the sentiment uh, in order to get it to fit on my card. And then I'm also stamping the Have a Ball using white embossing powder from Simon Says Stamp. And while I'm doing all of this that you're watching, I have my heat gun running. So that way I don't have to leave it on the paper a ton and I don't have a lot of warping. The reason that I stamped this twice is so... The, the words are so close together, I knew I wasn't going to be able to use one and like just one sentiment, break up just one sentiment. I wouldn't have enough gray on the other side. Here I'm using just um, some white fun foam to kind of pop this up off my white card base. I really like white on white. That's just me. It would also look pretty, you know, on red or blue, um, whatever colors you're using in your card, it's fine to use a colored card base. I just happen to like a really clean look and traditionally you can get that with a white on white. So after I had that glued down, I'm going to go ahead and use some scotch foam tape to pop up the sections of my sentiments that I've trimmed out with my Fiskars trimmer. And I'm just going to, I kind of 
put them, I'm going to put them on and I don't even know how you, what's the word? Um, so like they're staggered. Oh, hello. That was work. Wow. Um, so they're staggered and that way everything fit on there nicely and kind of like snugged in next to my little characters. And then just the last thing that I went in and did was use my, um, clear wink of Stella just to hit up um, some of the colored areas, the little balls, the um, accents on the ball there and on the stand. Nothing too overwhelming, just a little bit of shimmer. And then that's the whole card. So thank you so much for joining me and I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.